Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is why does a gas furnace not turn on? So, why is it not turning on in heating mode when you turn your thermostat on to heat and you turn your temperature up? So I'm going to be going over eight reasons why this may occur and what the problem is. So some of the problems have to do with the inducer motor because that's the first thing that turns on in the sequence of operation for heat. Some have to do with the base right here. Some have to do with the thermostat, the wire, and the control board. So this is an old furnace pulled out of a building. We didn't bother hooking the duct system up to this, but I'm just using this to explain these eight reasons. Now, if you turn your thermostat on to heat and you turn the temperature up and it's higher than what it is in the building, the very first thing that should turn on in the gas furnace is the inducer motor. So that's in any gas furnace whatsoever that's 80% efficient or higher. This one happens to be a 90% efficient furnace. And even if the thermostat is lit up, the first reason could be that you'd have no power to the furnace. So you want to make sure that you have the breaker switched on in the breaker box. You want to make sure that you have your power to the furnace on at the switch. This door switch right here could be open, so you want to make sure that that's closed. In this case, we're servicing the furnace, so we have no door right here. We're actually pulling it open, but when the furnace is operating, this door should be shut, and that switch should be closed, and your heat should turn on. The reason that the thermostat will be lit while the power's off to a furnace is just that it may have batteries on the inside, so that may trick you into thinking that you do have power but you really need to go into the control board and measure. In this case, we also see the LED flashing right here, so you know we have not only 120 volts, but we also have 24 volts right here coming into the board. But I'm just gonna take you in for an up-close shot. just wanna show you where you're measuring for your, your line voltage coming into the board at. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the shot, and we also wanna make sure that our probes aren't touching anything other than our L1 terminal right here, and our common wire on our common neutral bar. So you got to remember that L1 is always your, your line voltage coming into the board. And then right over here, we have all of your white wires. That's your commons, your neutral wire right there. And we see that we're reading zero volts right now on our multimeter. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power on. And now you see 124.8 volts. So we do have power to the board now. Reason number two could be that you have a bad transformer or a bad low voltage fuse. So you always measure to make sure that you have 120 volts to the board like we just did. And next we're going to measure right over here from R to C. And we want to see if we are measuring 24 volts here. So it'll be anywhere from 24 to say 29 and a half volts. If, as you see right now, we don't have any voltage. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check the, the fuse right here to see if it's intact. And next we're going to move over to our transformer lines and measure if we have 24 volts coming off of the transformer. So it's basically, we're moving backwards right now. We're gonna check for voltage here, then we're doing the fuse, then we're checking over at the transformer. Before I pull that fuse out, I'm gonna turn power off to the furnace. And you see there's a burn mark right there, so you know that the fuse is not intact. And if you can't see the inside of it, what you can do is you can check your resistance value across the fuse and if it reads oh well then we know that it's bad so right there you see we read oh well so this fuse is completely intact and we're going to measure our resistance across it and you see that we read 0, 0.0 ohms of resistance once you test for voltage up here, you test your fuse, make sure your fuse is intact. The next thing we want to do is measure for voltage over at your transformer wires. Now you can pull these wires off and measure for voltage, or you could just measure them at the taps where we're at right now. As you see, we have zero volts right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and turn the power on and show you what you should have. And right now you read 28.2 volts, and we also see that our our LED is lit and that signals that we do have 24 volts. So if you have this, this fuse popped, it's going to stop the electrical circuit. So the fuse is in between this red power wire and the R right here on your board. Now the job of the thermostat is to act like a switch and what it really is doing is when you turn your heat on, it's touching your R wire and your W wire together. And that's happening via these pins on the back of the thermostat. It's happening internally on the inside here. And so what happens is if you were to measure R to C, 
you'd measure 24 volts. If everything else before is good, you have your 120 volts, you have your transformer, you've got your 24 volts here, your fuse is intact, you will read 24 volts between R and C. Now, if your thermostat touches R and W together, you'll measure 24 volts between W and C. But you could have something opening up the circuit before the red wire right here makes it to the thermostat. And you could have something like this, it's a safety switch, and you could have a pan full of water, and this little float is up and is breaking the red wire. So you could have this connected to the, to the R terminal, and then this side right here connected to the thermostat wire. So it's breaking, breaking that red wire so you have no power to your thermostat. So that could be the third reason. Fourth reason is you see this length of wire right here, you know, it's running all the way through your building to the thermostat. So you, what you could have is some problem where maybe somebody accidentally uh, hammered down a wire staple and squished a wire. And that, that means maybe they separated a wire or maybe two wires are touching and maybe, maybe the, the red and the, the blue, so the R and the C wires are touching and that's why the, the fuse pops. You know, there could be a problem like that. So you want to make sure that if you're going to use staples, you zip tie your thermostat wire to the staple. And this way you don't squish the wire. You could have a mouse have chewed through your wires. So there could be some type of problem like that. Or you could have a loose connection here or here. So you could have a bad thermostat wire or intermittent electrical connection. So that's reason number four. Reason number five is that maybe your thermostat is bad. So if inside of this thermostat it's not touching R and W together when you turn your, your heat up higher than it is in the building, it needs to be two degrees higher than what it is in the building for the heat to turn on typically. If the R and W are not touching, your thermostat could be bad or if your thermostat does not have a C terminal, then your thermostat is only powered by batteries and maybe your batteries are weak. So if your thermostat is only powered by batteries, make sure to replace those batteries once or twice a year. Maybe there's a, a bad connection on the side right here, maybe it's corroded, so that could be the problem. So that's number five. Reason number six is if the control board is not allowing power to the inducer motor. So what we want to do is we're going to measure power right here on this wire and this wire. So we got our hot and our common to the inducer motor and you see that we're reading 0.0, .0 volts. So we have no voltage there, and then we can measure, follow these wires back to the control board and measure here. So right in here, that is our inducer motor hot and our common. And now you see we're reading 123 volts. So we're losing our, our voltage between here and there in this case, but I just wanted to show you what this looks like. So we're going to come in and I'm just going to show you a little bit closer where we have our inducer motor. So it's, this is our 120 volt hot right here. Our common will be found on the common neutral bar. And you want to have 120 volts making it all the way to this inducer motor. And a lot of times you have a problem over here and you're not even getting your voltage or you may have intermittent voltage due to a loose solder joint or in the relay right here that, that controls power uh, to come out through this through this prong right here, you could have a bad contact. So in this case, you see this little this little contact right here, little tiny thing. That's all it's in that little relay box. Here's another example. This one's a little bit bigger. So you have your your coil and then your contacts right here. So you could have burnt contacts, and it's just not allowing your your power to go through. If you have a bad relay, you just go ahead and replace the board. If you have a loose solder joint, you can. You know, turn the power off to that to that furnace and re-solder the back where the where the pin is. You know, just to get the the building owner some heat. But it's a lot faster to just find and replace a board than it would be to ever uh, find a relay that's the same size and the same current rating. So you just replace the board. Reason number seven could be a bad inducer motor capacitor. So a lot of inducer motors use a a two, a three, or a four UF capacitor. In this case, this one is a shaded pole. A motor so it doesn't use a, a capacitor but a lot of inducer motors are PSC and that's a permanent split capacitor and so they look just like this and in this case this is a 4 UF capacitor I have the wires detached and the the capacitor I, I put a resistor right across there to drain any residual power we're measuring the UF and we measure 1.7 so 
We know that this capacitor is no good if we apply power to the motor. It's just going to hum and it's not going to turn on. And so that could be the problem right there, just a bad capacitor. Here we see a 3UF capacitor, and if it's off of its rating by any more than 5%, you want to replace it with the same size UF rating and the same or higher voltage rating. Reason number eight could be a bad inducer motor, and there could be two reasons why it would be bad, and one would be the windings uh, may have gotten damaged, and that may have been caused by a bad capacitor, and they have overheated and the resin insulation is worn down, and, and what happens is this inducer motor gets really, really hot. It may work at first and then shut off, and then it just is no longer working. Maybe the thermal limit, if it's equipped with one, has opened up, or maybe the, the windings are just shorted and bad. But the other thing that could happen is you could have a seized rotor on the inside right here. So this one has bearings that you wouldn't be able to oil, but other ones, such as this right here, have an oil port. And so you want to oil this every couple months to get oil down into this right here, this section, because you just have this slip bearing. There is no, no rollers inside of here. So you can put oil right in here, and then you have this felt pad is what holds the oil. So this pad allows your little slip bearing to be lubricated. If one of these was not lubricated, then you're going to have your rotor wear down on the inside of here, so where it contacts in here, it could just get seized and stuck. So you have an oil port here and here on some of these older inducer motors that you need to be aware of and you need to oil them for preventative maintenance. So I just took you through all the reasons and it starts with the power coming in, the low voltage, and then the, the signal to the thermostat, and then when the thermostat sends a signal back to the board, then the power to the inducer motor and the inducer motor itself. And make sure to check out all the free resources we have at acservicetech.com. We have a bunch of thermostat wiring diagrams. We've got articles, quick tips. We've got quizzes and HVAC calculator. So make sure you check all those out. And I hope this video helped and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.